have like three and a half new products from Sephora to review today and what I mean by that. I went to Sephora, I picked up some new items that you guys said you wanted to hear my thoughts on. So we're gonna go over the Fenty Each Drop Lit All Over Glow Enhancer that I picked up. Finally got my hands on the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. The third item is the Laura Mercier Petal Soft Matte Lip Thing. Picked up one of these to try. But I also have like two new other things that I'm trying. The main focus are on these three. These are the most exciting. Uh, I don't even know if this is one of the new shades, but I picked up one of the Rose Ink Radiant Lip and Cheek Colors because I've been so curious about Rose Ink. So we're gonna try that. And also today, the Nomad Cosmetics Costa Rica palette just launched today, so I'm gonna use this. This isn't really a part of the video, but since it launched today, I'll tell y'all how it is with first use. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Those are what we're covering today, and I got something in my eye, but I will have timestamps for anything that you're particularly curious about. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the Fenty Beauty All Over Glow Enhancer. At this point, I've done two short form videos. I did a first impressions on this, which is on my YouTube, and then I also did a comparison between this and the Charlotte Tilbury, and they're very, very different. That is on TikTok and Instagram, but I will post it in a few days on YouTube if you aren't on those platforms. But yeah, I've done two videos. I'm very experienced. This is like my fourth time wearing it, so this is a pretty uh, in-depth review just ate a pizza bagel and now stuff on my teeth side note not relevant but as a pizza eater for how unhealthy and greasy it is if you get a taste for pizza and you don't want the unhealthy pizza english muffin bagel put on some pizza sauce and some low-fat cheese i like pineapples on mine i get some canned pineapples i cut up a little bit of pineapples perfect thing to curb your pizza appetite but now i'm like got stuff in my teeth okay anyways morgan sh shut up so here is the fenty ease drop lit all over glow enhancer i picked up the second shade this is taffy topaz there are four shades in the entire launch this launch last friday at sephora and they should be in all of your sephora stores because they do push fenty in those stores so what i noticed i only swatched the first two the lighter one is kind of more pinky and all four of these shades don't have a pigmented base. You will see what I mean. They're very liquidy. They don't have an underlayer like the Charlotte Tilbury does, but they have a very wet, juicy look, and there's only four shades because they don't have much color. In all honesty, I wouldn't mind getting the pinky shade, and I'll tell you why, but first let me show you. So this is what the packaging looks like. It's the same as the blurring skin tint from Fenty. And here's the back if you need to take a look. Made in the USA, 36 milliliters, 12 month shelf life. I'm kind of breezing through this because compared to most of my reviews, I have a lot of experience with this. I have some eyeliner in my hand that can't get off. I need you to ignore that. But take a look at the consistency here. It is quite liquidy. It's not thick at all. And it has a very watery base to it. And you can see there's not much color. And then let me actually turn the lights down a bit so you can see better. It really does give a dewy glow from within style look as compared to the Charlotte Tilbury, which has that pigment. So the difference between the lighter shade and this shade is the undertone of the glimmers, but they really don't look that different on the hand. I would say if you want something more so to highlight, go for the lighter shade. If you want something just to give you a glow from within type of look, go for the shade that's closer to your skin tone. So this is the closer to my skin tone shade, but honestly, the first two shades were not that different from one another, and it's very interesting how it gives this really dewy, hydrating look, and it feels hydrating on the skin, but as you rub it out, the thinner the layer, the less impact it has. So my suggestion, if you really want the glow, put on a thicker layer, because the less you have, honestly, the less it does barely see it. Let's put it on all over my face. So if you want, you can actually mix this in with your foundation. I tried it that way. I don't personally like to do that because I find that this product, it's pretty natural that the glow in here really does get lost in the foundation so it doesn't do too much. I find it looks better just to put some underneath to get the hydrating benefits of the product because it does feel quite hydrating on the skin. And this is not a ton of product. But you can see it doesn't do too terribly much. You can kind of see the glimmers here. It's very, very natural. So this is actually a really nice product if you don't want to put any product on your face at all. You just want to glow, maybe a little bit of concealer. This is going to give you a very natural look. 
for a lot of you, it's not gonna be enough to even justify purchasing because it doesn't do that much. I'm gonna put on a little bit more because I do find that where you layer more product, the dewier your skin looks. What I like about this product is how healthy and hydrated it makes the skin look. The Charlotte Tilbury can kind of dry out the skin because of the consistency of the product. It's just generally a more dry product. This one definitely adds a genuine dewiness and hydrated feel to the skin. So this definitely improves texture, which is why I would prefer this as a base prior to makeup. And I will come back and use this on top of foundation because it actually adds a really pretty natural glow to the skin, but that's how this is looking. I'm not in love with it. It's not a must have for me, but I definitely can see a specific customer that I would recommend this product to. And it's to the guys and gals that don't really want to wear coverage or makeup and just want a natural glow to run out. This is really pretty as well as like a little bit of concealer and this. For me, that was kind of a little too natural. For foundation, I'm gonna go with something pretty light. I'm gonna use the YSL Chushi Claw All-in-One Glow. I know I'm using the Best Skin Ever Concealer from Sephora, but I did not like the foundation and I decluttered it. So that's why I don't have this to pair with today. This is why I don't like decluttering because then a video comes up where I wish I had it. Anyways, now that we have a deal, let me pop this on and do my eyebrows and we'll get into the concealer. All right, let's put some concealer on. I obviously tested out the Nomad Cosmetics Costa Rica palette. Here's a quick look. This is not what this video is about, but I just had to share it with you because it did launch today. So gorgeous. Now I didn't use all of the shades in here because you know sometimes I've had had a little bit of issue with inconsistency with quality of you Nomad know, Cosmetics. All of the shades that I used today though work fabulous. So at least like the greens and the yellow I can check off on. This shimmer was insane. So far with the shades that I've used, I still need to continue testing this obviously. I do recommend this if you use the code Morgan Turner, it is affiliated, but it will save you 10% off if you're interested in that and that did just launch today. Let's take it back to Sephora. For concealer, I picked up at the store the Best Skin Ever. This is Sephora's house brand and if you've never heard of the Best Skin Ever line, last year they launched the Best Skin Ever foundation. A lot of people loved it. Definitely got the most hype out of any Sephora collection product. I wasn't a big fan of it. It looked a little heavy on my skin. Just didn't complement my dry skin. I did end up decluttering it. Unfortunately I don't have it to wear today but I was really curious about the concealer because it seemed like if they put that foundation in concealer form it would be something that I would enjoy. So I picked up the shade 20N. Honestly, I would say this is a wee bit dark than what I normally prefer, but this is a good color for when I'm wearing a foundation that's a little darker. Probably could have gone a little lighter. There's a lot of different shades to choose from. 20N is for light medium skin with neutral undertones. Honestly, this is a shade I would have picked up for myself online. I have light medium skin and it's only $15. So that's really great in price from Sephora. So hopefully it's good because it could be a good under $20 product. In Canada, can't find the shelf life of oh, 12 months so it says it has a natural finish full coverage and this is a first impressions so we're gonna try it first with a sponge on this eye so i'm gonna put it here and by the way here is what the applicator looks like feels very nice great for 15 dollars. i'm gonna use my beauty blender we're gonna blend that out it blends out really nice a little goes a long way with this and it's spreading across the whole eye with whatever's left over because it is more liquidy so it's spreading quite far on the face so i'm just gonna put that on my cheek then to get most coverage okay actually i really like this color on me maybe it could go like a half a shade lighter on my under eye but not mad at it i would say from this application and this is with a sponge it gave pretty full coverage wow okay i'm gonna use a brush next this is the hourglass concealer brush this is one of my faves so i'm gonna try and put a little bit less because i think there was a lot on the applicator so let's see what less coverage does with a brush okay pat it close to the lash line it's spread easier with a sponge it's pretty good coverage i would say it's almost full definitely got a little bit more coverage where i applied more of the product it still looks pretty good here i'm just gonna put a little bit down here just to even things out but i do want to keep this eye lighter to see if that makes a difference with the wear some concealers do better with a lighter layer okay so while that sets i will use a powder to set it but first i want to see 
if it moves into the fine lines before I put powder down because I know a lot of you guys don't wear powder. I want to take us back to the Ease Drop All Over Glow Enhancer to show you what it looks like on top of foundation and the kind of glow that it gives. They don't really advertise it to go over foundation, but I find that this is probably my favorite way to apply it because honestly, when you put foundation over it, this is so light and natural that the foundation pretty much completely covers it. The only way that you can get the glow really is if you use just concealer and a little bit of powder. I'm going to show you how it looks as a highlight. I'm just going to put a little bit on my hand and this is where I wish I had gotten the lightest shade because if I had gotten the lightest shade, I think it would work even better as a highlight. But since this has such a wet consistency to it, it actually looks really wet and hydrating on the skin, which is really pretty. Let me put this on the other side and I don't have any powder on by the way. Hmm, I don't know if you can see it kind of picked up the foundation a little bit and disrupted that and I don't even have powder underneath. But it didn't do that on this side, but you can see how it gives a really natural dewy look. Now the only catch is it's going to dry down a little bit and it's not going to look as glowy, but I find for really natural days, this is actually a very pretty highlight when you don't want that extra bit of glow. So overall, when it comes to this product, for me, it's not impactful enough. I'm using a product like this. I'm using something more metallic and impactful like the Charlotte Tilbury. This is like a good hydrating glowy base for days that I'm just wearing concealer and not foundation. That's that on that. Let's get back into the concealer now. So as I was talking, it actually doesn't look too heavy in my under eye creases. Please remember, no concealer is going to smooth out your under eyes. Some will improve smoothness, some will look more smooth than others, but if you have lines, you have lines, it is what it is. Concealer is going to swim into them. You're a human. <laughs> it's okay. We can't get rid of them with makeup. But I will say, it does not look bad. It looks a little drier on the area that had a thicker layer of concealer. I don't know if you can see that, but it actually looks okay on this eye. It's not completely smoothing. Like I can tell you with my Too Faced Born This Way concealer, which has a lot of similarities to it, the Too Faced Born This Way would look smoother. It looks a little bit more dry on the inner part of the eye and even this one as well. But let's see how we do with a little bit of powder. I'm going to use my sponge, smooth everything out while looking up, just like that. And I'm gonna use just the tiniest little bit of powder because you're not going to catch me not using powder. This is what I do on the daily. This is the Pat McGrath Blurring Under Eye Powder. This is my favorite powder for under eyes. Well, one of them. And I'm just going to lightly pat a little bit. We're going to give this a real chance. I'm going to put it on the center of my face. And I tell you, this is the most amazing blurring powder ever. I mean it. Here as well, center of the face. And we'll see how this looks. But so far, I'm not mad at it, but I don't know if you can see, there is a little bit of dryness kind of collecting over here. We'll see how that looks a little further down the road. Before I finish up my makeup, I did tell you I picked up one of the Blush Divine Radiant Lip and Cheek Colors, and I'm featuring this because a lot of you wanted to know my thoughts on it. So I wanted to get the skin tint, the one that's like balls, it's kind of like the Chanel, but they were sold out, and then you guys told me that it wasn't very good anyways, so I feel a little better. But I picked up the shade Helitrope. I'm not sure if this is one of the new shades. I'll confirm, obviously, right here. They look so pretty. Look at that. Hmm, how do I want to apply this? I'll just use my sponge. Oh, this like twists. It's like magnetic in there, so I got a pat. Not much happened. <laughs> Not getting too much. I mean, it's not the most emollient, so maybe it'll have some good staying power, but I think, yeah, it doesn't pick up well on a sponge. It's not slick enough. You definitely need your fingers to kind of warm it up a little bit and push it in, but it's not bad. It's not like a dry feeling. I just wasn't expecting that. I'm so used to just using my sponge and it working. Let me try a brush. Okay, brush is better as well. You wanna use something more firm than a sponge. Ooh, that's pretty. And before I put our Laura Mercier lip product on, I always am skeptical of a product that says it's for lips and cheeks. Normally that's not the case, but see? It looks a little dry on the lips. It could work though, like you could keep this in your purse. 
but I'd want to put a lip liner underneath it. It's okay as a lip color, still preferring it as a cheek color. One of the few lip and cheek products that really works for both the lips and cheeks in my opinion are the REM Beauty ones and then Charlotte Tilbury also has a formula for lip and cheek that works really good. Anyways, I'm gonna finish up the rest of the stuff and then we'll finish off with the Laura Mercier product. Actually, things have set a little bit more. I just wanted to show you the rose ink. Not looking as cute on the lips. It's just not a good product for the lips alone, at least in this color. So it will be pretty on the lips, but you definitely need to pair it with like a lip liner and a lip gloss, but it still is good to keep in the purse. But look at the concealer. It's already starting to look a little dry and kind of breaking up which is something that I don't notice with a lot of concealers, but I do notice with some. I'm gonna keep the eyeshadow pretty tight to the lash line so we can really see the behavior here, but with a little bit of powder, it's not looking as hot, which I don't like. I like to use a powder on the under eyes. It doesn't look as bad from afar, but up close, I'm like, ugh, we're looking a little dry. Okay, now I'll really be right back. Okay, let's finish up with lips. I have the Laura Mercier Petal Soft Lipstick Crayon. I love a good lipstick crayon. They had a beautiful display of this in Sephora and a lot of different colors. They all looked beautiful. It looks like there's three, six, ten colors. I guess that's not a lot, but it looked like a lot on the display. Anyways, I don't know if this is gonna go with the look today, but I couldn't help it. This shade Amelie, I believe is what it is. It has a nine month shelf life. It's made in Canada. No scent. And this is what it looks like. Haven't even swatched this, but you have a twist up for when you want more color. Let's see. Okay, so it doesn't have a lot of pigment. Okay. Yeah, it's really soft. This is not what I was expecting. I thought it was gonna have some pigment. Really, really soft. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. This shade is described as a coral pink, by the way. Let me show you the swatch. So you can see it's for something really sheer. This is great to keep in your purse. Knowing what I know now, I'm gonna pair this with a lip liner. My lips are kind of dry, so I'm gonna get a little bit of this ColourPop lip balm that I have next to me. Okay, and then we'll wipe off my lips. I'm using KKW lip liner in nude 0.25, unfortunately. As you know, you can't get this anymore. Do you guys think she's actually gonna come out with a rebranded KKW? I don't think so. I feel like that's a closed business venture right there. She's doing so good with skims. Okay, so just some of that. Now let's put this on top of the lip liner. It's gonna help blend the lip liner as well. But yeah. Okay, so I didn't really like at least this color on its own as much, but when you mix it with a lip liner, it's perfect for that kind of ombre, really natural look if you get one of the more natural colors. I imagine if you pick up one of the deeper colors, you'll get a little bit more pigment, but it has this soft matte finish. I felt like it looked a little dry on its own on the lips, but now that I've moisturized and put the lip liner, it actually is quite pretty. I wouldn't say I'm in love with this product. I was expecting something a little different, but it feels nice and hydrated now as long as your lips are prepped I think you will like this but expect to build it up for the color but I think it's gonna be more so for that natural lip that's really trending right now just a little bit of lip liner and then this in the center and you're gonna get kind of the model off-duty lip which I think was the intention of this which is really pretty okay I'm gonna pop on some falsies and I'll be back to give you my final thoughts here we are all put together let's talk about my final thoughts the Fenty all over glow enhancer I think is a good product it really is not for me this is for the kind of person that doesn't like coverage really doesn't wear too much foundation, just wants a little healthy glow to the skin, this would be great for you. For me, it's not enough, it's a little too natural. I like coverage, I need something more powerful. But it does have a very nice hydration to the skin that is beautiful. Now, the Sephora Collection Concealer, I'm not sold on it. Obviously, for today, this is a first impressions. I've only worn it for like an hour or so now. I can see it starting to kind of collect into the fine lines and look a little dry. I'm going to pin a comment and update on how it wears. I'm not sold on it. It's not the most amazing concealer first impressions, but who knows? Sometimes these drier concealers, they'll kind of like freeze for <laughs> after they dry and then they'll like wear perfectly throughout the day. So that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen with this but I'm not sold on it yet. And the last big one was the Laura Mercy Petal Soft Lip Pencil. Wasn't sold on it at first. Now I am. I love this lip. This lip combo gives like a Kylie Jenner lip. If you just use like a neutral taupey brown lip liner and then kind of a pink natural hydrating lip color in the center, it gives that effect, gives fuller lips. So I actually think I like this. Just know going in that it's going to be sheer, but this is a great purse lip. 
and it actually feels very hydrating but just make sure one you prep the lips and I do think a lip product like this needs a bit of a background but other than that I think I really really like this again if anything weird happens I'll put in the comments down below and then the other two random things I tried the rose ink so far I'm liking it, it doesn't set down so it feels a little bit more creamy on my cheeks which is really good if you have dry skin and then the eyeshadow palette so far I had a really great experience with all the shadows that I used so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you tried any of the products that I used today be sure to comment down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one